Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, late Council and Council members of the public here present. Our viewers out there, welcome back to continuation of our proceedings. And now I, I want to pass the floor now to Madam Chair for our next item on the agenda. Madam Chair, over to you. Auzu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. I will call on Honorable Sila to lead us in Muslim prayers and Honorable Joanna to lead us in the Christian prayers. Thank you. Auzu billahi min al-shaytan r-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Maliki wa midiniya kana abudu wa iya kana stain idina sirat al-mustahim. Surat al-lazina anamta alihim khayri madhu balihim walad dhalim Inna al-lazina halu rabbun allahu zun masaha mutatan nazalu alihim ul-malaikatu an la tahafu wa la tahsanu wa absiru bil jannati ladhi kuntum tu'addamu nahnu awliyaku fi hayati dunya wa fi al-akhiri wa lakum fiha ma tazi anfusikum wa lakum fiha ma tadda'una nuzalan min khafurun rahim wa man akhsana khawlan min man daha ila allahi وأمل سالحا وخال إنني من من المسلمين إن الله وملائكة يصلون النبي يا الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما بيرمة الله مسلي على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أخلق والخاتم لما سبق الناس الحق بالحق والهادي إلى سرتك المستهيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومدار العظيم سبحان ربي كرب الزة أما يصفون والسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين. O God our Father, we thank you for the gift of life. Our mouths are too small to appreciate you for all the wonderful and amazing things you do in our lives each day. God of mercy and grace, show us the brightness of your face. Guide us as we journey on. Provide our needs and send your Holy Spirit to lead us day by day. We ascribe honor and praise to you today and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, both of you. And um, <coughs> can we have the registrar call the witness? Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Witness. Good morning, Mr. Witness. Can you hold on to this? Good morning. Welcome to this commission of inquiry into local government councils and related matters. Um, to swear you in, what, um, may I know what your religion is? What my own? Religion. Islam. Okay. Do you wish to swear by the Holy Quran or make an affirmation? By the Holy Quran. You're going to swear by the Holy Quran? Yes, please. Madam Chair, the witness wishes to swear by the Holy Quran. Uh, Mr. Witness, please repeat after me. You 
have to hold the Holy Quran then. What do I need to do? Hold the Holy Quran. Okay. Okay, and repeat after me. Okay. I, I care no so. Care no so. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I will speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing. And nothing. But the truth. But the truth. So help me God. So help me God. You may be seated, please. Thank you. Madam Chair, the witness has been sworn. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. <coughs> Good morning, Mr. Saul. Good morning. You are welcome. Thank you. Um, Council. Thank you, Chairperson. Good morning. Good morning. Please state your names for the record. Cherno Amadou Saul. And where do you live? I live at Baraka Estate. What is your occupation? I'm the Director General of Internal Audit. And Internal Audit is under which ministry? That is, that is under the Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs. Thank you. Mr. Sol, you gave a statement to the commission, is that correct? That's correct. And the statement was prepared by you? Yes, ma'am. Sorry, just try. Can you confirm that that is the statement that you gave? Yes, it is. And do you adopt the statement as part of your evidence before the commission? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Chairperson, I apply to tender the statement of the witness, Chair No Amadusol. The statement um, made by Cherno Amadou Sow with respect to the audit report for Basse Area Council for the Commission of Inquiry into the Conduct of All Local Government Councils and Connected Matters thereto, um, dated the 31st of May 2023, is hereby admitted in evidence and marked as LGC slash BSC slash IA slash CAS slash 001. As the commission pleases. Mr. So, can you give us a brief summary of your educational and professional background? Um, I have a, an MBA from the University of Lincoln in the United Kingdom. I am also um, a member of the Chartered Institute of Accountant, ACC. I have an ACS. I also have a CPA, um, licensed to practice public accounting um, in the state of California, United States of America. Um, 
my professional career actually uh, began with the Central Bank of the Gambia uh, when I left school. I worked with the bank for about nine years, and um, the bank actually was the institution that um, sent me to the United Kingdom to pursue my educational um, um, courses. Um, upon my return, I did work for Gambia, United, um, for Gambia Women's Finance Association for a number of years, and then um, I subsequently um, left the United, Gambia and then stayed in the United States for a while, where I worked with the U.S. government um, in various capacity. My last employer was um, the city of New York, where I was the division chief responsible for pension accounting and um, cash control for about 10 years. Um, I became the Director General of Internal Audit about two and a half months ago. So basically that's, that's my qualification and my um, experience in terms of um, um, work experience. Did you say you became the Director General of Internal Audit two and a half months ago? Yes, that's correct. Can you give us an idea of what the role of your directorate is? Um, basically, as the director general, I'm responsible for the day-to-day -day, um, running of the directorate, um, which, among other things, include um, the assigning of, you know, audit function. Um, I'm responsible for signing up on all audit engagements. You know, so um, I'm in that role, assisted by a team of um, senior officials, but basically my primary responsibility is to make sure that um, the directorate functions the way it was intended by government on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask you some more questions, but could you maybe pull the mic closer to you? Yes. So we can hear better. Thank you. And what is the function of the directorate of internal audit? What does the directorate actually do? So basically, the directorate was um, established by, by government to provide um, internal audit services to the government of the Gambia. And through um, the proof, you know, that was informed by the Public um, Finance Act and also the audit charter. We derive our mandate from that. And what we do is to make sure that um, we're able to provide you know, internal audit services um, by way of making sure that you know, government policies are implemented, you know, and then also to make sure that um, we're providing assurance services across government. So basically, that is what our mandate is. You know, um, occasionally, we are also um, called upon to do other audits, you know, depending on the need, you know, when the minister asks us to do special audit, we are also um, tasked to do that as well. That's the Minister of Finance. Okay. And there's already a national audit office, and your directorate is Directorate of Internal Audit. Um, what's the difference between the two? So basically, um, the national audit, I mean, act as an external audit um, arm of government, they provide, by law, they are mandated to provide external audit service to the government of the Gambia. Um, what we do is to provide the internal audit aspect of it. Um, there is a difference between um, internal and external audit. Um, with internal audit, basically, we report to management. You know, our findings are basically addressed to, to management. We look at systems, we look at operations, and see where there are um, deficiencies. We document those and, and report those to management through our audit reports, with a view to you know, making sure that management looks at those and then address um, whatever deficiencies we are able to identify. I guess with the case of the internal, um, the National Audit Office, they have a different reporting mandate. They report to the National Assembly. And um, I think that's where the distinction is. Um, sometimes, you know, our work could be complementary because most often they do um, look at the reports that we provide, and, um, but then obviously um, they have a different function altogether. 
Now, um, I note from your statement that you have said your department posts staff, internal audit staff, to various ministries and um, other offices. Yes, that's correct. And you have also said that you post staff to local government authorities. Um, currently, no, we are not posting staff to local government authorities as at the moment uh, because we have some capacity issues as well. Um, we are not able to provide internal audit staffing to every ministry, government department, and agency. So mostly at the moment, we have internal auditors posted in all the ministries and um, most of the government departments and agencies. But obviously, um, where the need arises and where we have the capacity and we have the manpower to do that, um, we do conduct um, internal audit services um, for most of these local government authorities as well. And are there any plans to post staff, internal audit staff to the local government authorities anytime in the near future? Um, there's, that's a possibility, um, but I think, you know, the, the local government authorities are in a unique um, situation because they are quasi-government, they are not necessarily um, central government, and um, to the extent that we provide internal audit services to them is because they do have um, government subvention. So I think, you know, what we would encourage is to have um, the local council establish their own internal audit functions, um, build the capacities of those internal audit functions so that they're able to um, carry out internal audit um, services for the local um, authorities. Okay. Um, you have, do you have staff posted at the Ministry of Lands and Regional Affairs? Yes, we do. And there was a report that was prepared by the internal audit unit at the Ministry of Lands. That's correct. And what's the relationship between the Directorate of Internal Audit and that report that was prepared by the internal audit? Well, when, when we post, um, you know, internal auditors to the various ministry, um, functionally, they report to me as the Director General of Internal Audit. Um, administratively, they report to the Permanent Secretary of, of uh, whichever ministry they are posted. So whatever report is, 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 um, is whatever audit is, is, is carried out by, by the unit at the local government, actually um, we, are, we sanction the, the audit, we, we vet the, um, the um, we review the reports, and then we sign off on the report. So basically they are acting as agents for, for the directorate. Now can you tell us about this particular internal audit report for Bassa Area Council? Um, how was it sanctioned? Um, from what I read, this was basically, um, you know, at the request of the Basse local um, council. I think the chairman and the councillors had written to the permanent secretary, um, local government and lands, requesting this audit to be um, to be carried out. So once that request came into the permanent secretary, it was forwarded to the um, to the internal auditor at that ministry. And um, then the former director um, had assembled a team, you know, um, led by one of our internal auditors at the Minister of Finance, Minister of um, Foreign Affairs. So that is how the um, audit team came about, the audit um, engagement came about. And did you sign off, or did your directorate sign off on the report that was prepared? Yes, we did. Do you have a copy of the report? Yes, I do. Now, this report is the system audit for the Bassa Area Council for the period 1st January 2020 to 30th September 2022. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. Chairperson, I applied to tender the final audit report for Bassa Area Council, system audit for the Bassa Area Council for the period 
1st January 2020 to 30th September The final audit report, Base Area Council, which is um, a system audit for the Base Area Council for the period 1st January 2020 to 30th of September 2022, and dated the 11th of April 2023, is hereby admitted in evidence and marked as LC, LDC slash BSC slash SA slash CAS slash 002. As the commission pleases. Um, that that copy is our own office copy. It's I I'm not sure whether you want to make a copy of it because I was in I was just asked to bring um, to present a copy, but this is our own office copy. Yes, you can have a copy of it for now, and then later you can apply to have the original back. Okay. Could you give the uh, exhibit to the witness? Now, can you tell us what the objective of this audit was? So um, the, the, the key objectives of the audit were to access uh, and evaluate the adequacy and effectiveness of internal control, risk management, and governance processes of the Basi Area Council. Review the design and operating effectiveness of internal control surrounding various processes and systems, including access the level of compliance with applicable procedures governing the Council, assess and give reasonable assurance on the effectiveness and efficiency of the operations of the Council, Council's revenue is fully collected and banked timely. The Council's bank statements and bank reconciliation to ensure reconciliation is conducted timely. Review, uh, review policy documents surrounding budget execution, including expenditures and donor funds and grants. Review and design operating effectiveness of the internal control of the Basi Area Council. That was the objective of the audit. And I note that there are several observations and issues that came up and they're contained in most of the report. That's correct. Now, I refer you to page 11 of the report. Okay. And during the course of that audit, it is observed that the audit team could not audit the fuel management of the council as no fuel log records log or records were presented to the audit team after several requests and follow-ups and the audit team further requested for the bank statements of the gtb account managed by the council however as at the time of drafting this report management has not provided information relating to the bank accounts of the audit team for review. Can yes. you tell us what? Yes, that, that's correct. Uh, because what happened is once the engagement team is on the ground, um, they would make a request of um, documents and information that should be made available to them. 
So where that is not forthcoming, um, what we would call that in audit is um, scope limitation. It means that information was not um, available to the audit team, so they could not um, verify the data, they could not run the, render an opinion on, on that. that is, this is why we said that um, there was a scope limitation, um, the fuel log wasn't provided, um, some of the bank statements we have not provided. And I know that the implications that have been listed is there's a risk of misappropriation of public funds if auditors are denied access to records. And I believe there's a risk that the Director General of Internal Audit or its representative is unable to provide independent and objective assurance service to help the council achieve its objectives. So what, yeah. um, what steps are well, what steps is the director? Wow. Is the directorate able to take any steps or any action to sanction the council? Um, no, ma'am. Um, our role is really um, to look at the systems and um, render an opinion on them based on um, our own audit findings. Um, we don't have an enforcement mechanism. Um, our findings are reported to management with our recommendation. So um, when there is no non-compliance on the part of uh, management in terms of making data or information available, we will document that in the report. Um, and, you know, whoever, you know, um, is responsible will see that this is uh, a limitation. Um, but on the part of the directorate, we don't have the power um, to sanction the council. So when you prepare this report, who is it sent to? Um, it was sent to, um, to the CEO of the Basi Area Council. It was copied to the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Local Government and Lands. It was also copied to the um, Permanent Secretary, Minister of Finance. It was copied to the Secretary General. Um, let me just um, be sure. Um, and it was copied to the Auditor General as well. And it was copied to the Accountant General. And the Chief of Staff Office of the President. Okay. Um, so on page 12, one of the governance issues that's hi highlighted is about standing orders. Can you tell us about that? So what um, the observation here is that um, councils normally would operate based on standing orders. That's what de determine or that is what um, inform the way they conduct their meetings and, and things like that. So it, it's, it's just like a rule that governs the way business is, is conducted by the council. The audit team observed that there was no such um, a standing order. Um, so it means that um, by implication, if you don't have a standing order, then meetings can, they, there is no governing process um, that can be used to conduct meetings. And we think that that is necessary for, a fun, for the council to, to, to function effectively. So at some point during the um, engagement, you know, the team was told that um, they have drafted a standing order, but, um, and it was made available, but there was no process to validate or there was no formal approval of that standing order. Min minutes were not provided where the council met to adopt um, those standing orders. So that's, that's the observation, that's the finding. Thank you. Council, may I please yes, of course. a bit? Um, Mr. So, um, as of the 11th of um, April 2023, um, we have noted that um, um, in the comments, in your comments, you've indicated that the fuel log and the documents that were requested with respect to the bank statements from GTB yes. were not provided. That's so, correct. as of this date, did you receive any further? information to that effect? No, we have you? not. All right. Thank you. Council, you may proceed. Thank you. 
Um, you, your audit team also noted that there was no strategic plan for the council. It's page 14. Yes. 14. No strategic plan and no activity reports as well. So that's page 13 and 14. Can you tell us about this? So it, it's, it's important because um, if without the strategic plan, it, it means pro um, the council doesn't have a sense of direction. Um, it's important that um, the council develop a strategic plan because that plan is what informs you know, what they do on a day-to-day. -day. And at the end of the year or however often they want to assess their performance, you know, then they would have a document to, um, to fall back to they can compare their performance against that strategic plan. So um, that was the observation. Um, so we thought it's, 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 it's necessary for the council to have developed a strategic plan. And with respect to the activity report, um, it was noted by the audit team that there has not been any activity report. Um, this is um, supposed to happen on a yearly basis. The council should, should come up um, through the chair um, to present an activity report of the, of the, of the year. But the audit team has noted that that hasn't happened for a number of years. And um, the implication I see is that there's a lack of accountability and transparency mm -hmm. because, because of the absence of the annual activity report of the council. That's correct because, I mean, one way to hold the council and the councillors to account is really through um, that activity report. I mean, comparing that against any plan that they have. So that in the absence of that, you know, there is no way or there is little room to, um, to hold the, um, the council to account. You know, the, if, if you don't have something in front of you to say that this is what we do or this is what we have done um, during the year, mm -hmm. then it's going to be difficult um, for anybody to assess the effectiveness of the council. They have said that the annual activity for 2020 and 2021 reports is not completed, but will be completed and ready for inspection by 20th March 2023. Have you received these documents? No, ma'am, we have not. At page 15 of the report, you have highlighted some recommendations from the National Audit Office audit report that were not complied with. I know that there's only four, but already I can see that there's a few more that have not been complied with. Yes. And as that, when this report was being prepared, were they complied with? No, they were not complied with. Um, that is the observation because when the National Audit Office did an audit, um, they made recommendations and the audit team um, picked on, saw those recommendations from the National Audit um, Office, mm -hmm. but then saw that um, those recommendations were not implemented. Um, so at the time of, of the report writing up to now, um, there is no evidence presented to us that um, those recommendations by the National Audit Office have been implemented. And this is even as a 2022, because the, the report, the audit was for the periods 2020 and 2022. That's correct. But when was it finalized? Um, this was finalized, um, this, the report was signed on 11th April, yes, 2023. I'm sure it was finalized before that. Yes. And nothing? Nothing, no. So there's a financial issue that has been highlighted on page 16, and it is the issue of paying rent for the chairman of Bassa Area Council. Can you tell us about that? So the finding is that um, the council has rented um, a property, a house, um, or an apartment um, within the Greater Banjul area. And I think that was meant for the chairman to use while he is um, within the Greater Banjul area for official engagement. Um, so the audit team noted that in addition to having rented that house for the chairman, um, he is also paid um, DSA, that is daily um, substance allowance as well, uh, whenever he's out of um, you know, his jurisdiction, which is Basse. 
So we thought that um, probably um, that is um, a duplication um, once he's, he's getting paid, once he's, he's having a rented house, which actually um, we have found no evidence of that being um, in, in line with any of the um, LGA um, requirements to rent a property for the, for the chairman. So that was the, the observation by, by the audit team. Can you just tell us what DSA is? What's it, um, what's that is for? daily substance allowance. That is what is paid normally to, um, to civil servants when they leave their um, area of jurisdiction. Let's say if, if you happen to go um, you know, to the provinces on track, um, I think you are paid $1,500 um, daily for you to be able to uh, pay your accommodation as well as your, um, your meals. Um, I note that it says, we also noted that after renting and furnishing the apartment for the council, he's always paid a night allowance whenever he's traveling to the greater Banjo. So they rented and furnished the apartment for him. Yes, that's correct. Um, since 2021, at an annual cost of $60,000. That's correct, yes. Um, they said that the rent has been canceled? We saw evidence, we, have saw, we, see, we didn't see any evidence of the cancellation of the rent, we saw the, um, the tenancy agreement, you know, it was a six yearly, ten, I mean six uh, monthly tenancy agreement. The first six months was paid for, it was $30,000, but um, we have no evidence of um, cancellation, we did not see a cancellation notice. And did he return the, the $60,000 that was paid? Um, no, that, inform that, that evidence has not been presented to the audit team. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <coughs> Mr. So, what is the effect? Um, you do say that um, um, the duplication, uh, there is a duplication of payment, right? It appears that way um, because, you know, the night allowance is meant to really um, pay for your accommodation. That is why you're paid. Um, the, um, the DSA. So if you have a rented property dedicated for your own use, um, my guess is then the night allowance would be, um, would shouldn't be appropriate in that instance. So what would be the um, effect? Well, the effect is um, the, 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 the council is, is losing, um, having to pay um, rent for the chairman at the same time when the chairman travel outside of Basse, um, he's also paid um, night allowance. Thank so you. in effect, the council is, is, is losing more money. Thank you. Councilman. Thank you. So, so I refer you to page 17 of the report, yes. where the lack of professional qualified accountants at the finance department of Basse Area Council is highlighted. Can you tell us about this? So the audit team has um, you discovered that the, um, the finance director and um, most of the senior officers do not possess um, the required uh, minimum qualification to occupy those roles. Um, they made reference um, to the advertisement for the position of finance director and the requirements were a CCA um, or a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in accounting. Um, it was um, determined that the finance director did not possess any of those qualifications. And that is also reflected by the way the finance department was being run, you know, by the leaders. Um, there was no professionalism involved in running the department at all. We attribute that to lack of knowledge and, and, and expertise in the area of accounting. And it is correct that the finance director is supposed to assist in advising the council on financial matters? That's correct. You have, your report states that um, the highest qualification the current finance director came across during the review was ACCA Foundation Level 1, and in brackets, ACCA Diploma in Accounting and Business, which is below bachelor's degree level, even though he did not apply for the position at 
Basse Area Council, but applied for Janjambure Area Council. Furthermore, an applicant with a master's degree with experiences applied for the position at Basse Area Council, but was later given Director of Finance at Janjambure Council, which he did not apply for or wanted. Now, can you tell us how far the ACCA Foundation Level 1 is from the requirement that the Director of Finance needs to have? It's, it's, it's very, very far. Um, it's, the audit report did indicate that it's well below a bachelor's degree in accounting. So it's, it's well um, below the requirement. Um, oh. with, with respect to the other findings, in terms of um, the current director of finance not even having to apply for the position to begin with was also um, noted um, in the audit as because, you know, during the first interview, um, it was only two applicants that had applied for the positions who were called upon for an interview. Um, and they did not include the current director of finance. So the audit team did um, find out that, you know, after the uh, interview was canceled on, on two occasions, and the third occasion it was held, then that was the time that the, the current director of finance showed up um, at the interview. So we, they had evidence um, going through the, um, the interviewer's evaluation notes, and it turns out that um, the current director of finance was rated the most qualified because he was, um, there were three of them were interviewed at the, third, at the third interview. And there was evidence also that, um, you know, the director of finance did apply to be the current director of finance at Basse did apply to be director of finance at Janjambure. And the, um, the director of finance currently at Janjambure, or at least at some point at Janjambure, who was the most qualified, wasn't hired by Basse, but instead he was hired um, at Janjambure where he wasn't actually, where he didn't apply for. So um, we thought that was an abnormality but that is what the audit team found out from on, during their investigations. So are you saying that during the interview that was held for the three persons, the director of finance for Basse did not apply but was interviewed? That's correct. And the director of finance at Janjambure was also interviewed in that same? Yes, the, at, at some point, I mean, because the director of finance at Janjambure was actually, um, had applied for Basse. Yes. And records indicate that he was the most qualified. He has met the minimum qualifications required for the position. But instead, he was giving the director of finance position at Janjambure. My understanding is that he is no longer with Janjambure, but okay. at some point he did accept that position and, and did serve as director of finance at Janjambure. And um, are you able to recall whether it was actually the local government service commission that interviewed them? Um, no, I, we have, I, two of the, um, the interviewers, um, had their names on the, um, interview record seat, but the third did not. Um, we have the names of the two, but we don't have the name of the third interviewer. I don't know where they are from. Okay. Could you also tell us, um, with the qualifications of the current director of finance, what title or what position would he ordinarily be eligible for? Um, Ma'am, you asking me to speculate. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Um, it, 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 it depends. Um, um, I mean, on the finance in a finance job. That's going to be hard for me to answer, but all I know is that he doesn't meet the minimum qualification to be director of finance. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm Yeah. Um, um, you've indicated in your report um, that um, the responsibility. Um, to execute this is 
um, the PS, the Chairman Local Government Service Commission, the Chairman Establishment Committee and CEO. And um, from the date that this report was signed off, was there any action taken by the people that you identify as being responsible? Um, basically, um, where are you reading, ma'am? Which, 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 is it yeah, the management page, response? Page 18. Is it the management response? Um, yes. Okay. Um, so with, with respect to management responses, um, that is basically what the management said. That is not our own, um, that is not the audit team's um, making that suggestion. It's management responding on our findings um, because once we made the findings, we will send them, we, we send them the report mm -hmm. and uh, made our recommendations. Mm -hmm. So based on those recommendations, they would now say um, officer X, Y, and Z is to be, um, would be responsible for the implementations of those recommendations. So they came up with those names. Um, and my hope is that, or my expectation is that, those officers um, who are named as having the responsibility to carry through those, um, those recommendations are actually going to do it, are, are currently doing it. But um, we have not been provided any evidence to suggest that um, that is currently um, ongoing. Exactly, that was my question. Whether uh, further to their response, whether you have received any information no, no. from management to say no, that we, we these have actions not. were taken care of. Thank you. Mm. Council, you can proceed. Okay. Um, can you allow um, Commissioner Joyner to to ask? Question? Um, good morning. Proceed. Good morning, uh, Mr. So. Um, just some point of clarification. Are you aware mm. that some of these positions in the councils are filled by the local government commission, even though they are, the advert would come from the local area council, but to dispatch or to send somebody to fill certain places or positions uh, done by the local government commission. Are you aware? No, I am not aware. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now, at, oh, further on page 18, um, you've highlighted that general council minutes are not signed. So I had already stated that there are some uh, recommendations that were made by National Audit Office to the council previously that are not even contained in the ones that you have highlighted in this report, and I believe this is one of them. Uh -huh. So it appears that even as at 2023, they're still not preparing minutes and signing them as they should. Yes. Do you know whether they have a clerk now of council? Um, no, we have not been provided any evidence to suggest that that's the case. Um, normally what should happen is um, once the council meet um, and the minutes are, are drafted, um, they should be reviewed and signed by the council, uh, by the council chairman and whoever else should, should, should sign them. But then the audit team noted that discovered that none of the council meeting have been signed. But then the other thing the, I think the audit team also said was talking to the councillors um, and the chairman, I think this is attributed more to lack of um, understanding of, of um, you know, um, the way minutes are supposed to be handled more than anything else. We think that um, this is just a lack of capacity on their part. So that's why I'm asking because it's the duty of the council clerk to prepare the minutes. Right. And the council clerk is also hired by the local government service commission. So it would be essentially their responsibility to ensure that the person that is hired actually knows what to do. Correct. And at some point they didn't have a clerk. That's why I'm asking whether you know if they have a clerk now because there are still issues with the minutes. Um, I am not sure. I, I don't know whether they have a clerk now. Okay, so they have said that the time frame for regulating um, or for fixing this issue is any time from, any time from now, effective receipt of this report. Um, we have not been given evidence that that's the case, but um, if they 
I, I, I think this is um, an administrative matter. It, it shouldn't be complicated. Mm -hmm. They should be able to, um, to have minutes signed on, um, being signed um, from, from, from now on. All right. I refer you to page 19. It would appear that, so there's an audit, internal audit team now at the Basse Area Council. Mm -hmm. At some point there wasn't any. And the observation is that during the audit, an interview with the audit committee chairman and the honorable chairman revealed that the general counsel rejected the audit committee report on the finance director without any justification. In a letter seen by the auditors, the audit committee chairman wrote to the honorable chairman to request for a resignation as the chairman of the audit committee since the general counsel rejected his committee's report without providing any justification. Can you tell us about this? Yes, um, I think the council has an internal auditor. I think the issue is, um, to a large extent, is the lack of capacity of the internal auditor um, that the council has. And, and, and the second thing is that, um, you know, I don't think the internal audit and the committee, because I think the council has an internal audit committee. Yes. I don't think they have been giving the necessary support. I, um, they had made um, their own finding, particularly um, about the current director of finance. And I think that, um, you know, that finding was rejected by the council um, for, they said, for lack of evidence. But clearly, um, there are bigger issues we know uh, with respect to the council and maybe because um, the internal the finance director um, wills more power mm -hmm. you know and is able to um, to to get the council um, to reject the the findings of the internal audit committee and I think that led to the resignation of members of the internal audit committee did they actually resign Um, well, um, I think that is, um, that is the, um, the understanding by talking to um, the chair of the, cans of the audit committee. Okay. Um, I think um, subsequent to the rejection, um, they did resign from, from, from their post. So management response said that as a result of the rejection of the internal audit report, this prompted the general counsel to write to the line ministry to invite the internal audit department to do an independent audit. Was, was that actually the case? Is, was there uh, is the time frame within? I am not sure if I can make that connection, but obviously this is what the management is saying. Um, this is their response. Uh, but all I know is that what I read is um, the council requested the audit. Um, they have written to the permanent secretary um, the local government ministry to request for the internal audit to come and do an audit. I think what they said um, to the audit team was that um, because the council members time was coming to an end, um, they wanted to have an, you know, a review of the council's finances um, to see what's going on. So I think probably it has something to do with the rejection of this audit but I'm sure there was some uneasiness among some of the council members. Mm. Now, um, you've highlighted that there are contracts that were initiated and awarded without general council resolutions. So this is one finding, but there's a finding after that about inactive committees, and one of those committees is the contract committee. So can you tell us about those two issues? So um, the finding is that... Um, under normal circumstances, um, all contracts um, or all projects should normally be um, debated by council and be approved. Um, we have, the audit team has not come across evidence of that happening, even though there has been a number of projects that have been undertaken by the Basse Area Council, but um, without council having to debate on those projects and then give it the necessary approval. And the other finding was that the contract committee um, was in meeting regularly to debate on contract um, issues prior to awarding of contracts. That is what um, the GPPA 
um, procurement rules um, requires that institutions are supposed to have contract committees and those committees should meet to evaluate, um, you know, if there's a contract to evaluate bids, you know, and if there's a procurement also to evaluate, um, you know, uh, bids from, from different suppliers. Um, there has not been any evidence presented to the audit team to indicate that that has been um, what BASE has been practicing. Um, it appears from the management response uh, in respect of the contracts not going through the general counsel. Their action plan is henceforth the management will endeavor to involve the general counsel in the assessment, evaluation, and discussion of all contracts and projects in the future. It from their response, it appears they seem to believe that that is their mandate and they will involve the council rather than the other way around. I'm not yes, sure if yes, that's what yes. the team got well, from speaking to them. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just their own choice of words because um, our reading of this um, at least seems to indicate that they recognize that the council has a role um, to play in awarding contracts, i.e., even if they don't sit over a particular contract, in principle, they should debate um, these contracts or these projects, um, which actually it's projects that um, subsequently leads to the awarding of contracts. So the projects should be approved at the level of the council prior to, um, you know, having um, can, prior to having the council, you know, um, tender for these projects and. And, and evaluate bids. So I think it's that, you know, involvement that was lacking. So I believe going forward, they would, they would, um, you know, involve the. At least that's what the response is. Mm. That's our reading of what their response is. Now, at page twenty-one, you have observed that there's no or there are no development activities for Bathe Area Council in the 2022 budget? Yes, we, we, we observe that because, um, you know, the, the observation is that what happens is every year, councillors would, would come, would submit um, development plans, you know, and those are consolidated into you know, um, the, what would be the budget development plan for a particular year. So for 2022, no such plans exist. Um, I think the audit team, um, speaking with the councillors, I think um, we are made to un uh, understand that there was, because the 2021, so most of the 2021 um, projects have not been completed, they kind of like roll over into 2022. And also because of um, the lack of funding, um, I mean, and I think that was because the, the, the rollover was mainly because of lack of funding, and maybe they came to the realization that there's no point having, having um, a plan for 2022. But that is also in violation of the, uh, of the LGA Act, which specifically said that 60% of their revenue per year should be um, devoted to development uh, projects. So um, every year, whatever revenue is collected should be 60% um, of that revenue should go towards development project. Um, so the audit team observed that did not that did not happen in 2022. So it would appear that for 2022, all they did was pay salaries, essentially, Correct. and bills because there was no development. Correct. Yeah. And. Um, are you aware that out of that 60% of their development budget, central government is obligated to pay 25% of that 60%? Um, I'm not aware of that. Um, at some point in the report, I'm sure um, you will come to that. I mean, their government made a subvention, I'm not sure which year, um, of about $2 million. Um, I'm assuming that is, is, is part of what you are, you are referencing, but I, I'm not sure about that 25% that you, you're talking about. So central government is meant to provide certain grants to the area councils. I believe there are three categories. Okay. They're provided for in the Local Government Finance and Audit Act. 
And so in situations like this, where the council is unable to carry out its development because of lack of funding, and central government has an obligation to provide certain funding, would this, if the team had been aware of those provisions, would this be something that would be flagged for central government? Because the report is going to go back to them. Um, can, can, you, can you rephrase that question? I'm not sure I'm, I'm clear. So you have indicated that you're not aware that oh. central government is meant to provide um, certain grants to the councils. Correct, yes. Now, the area council is unable to plan for development right. for 2022 because it does not have funds. Right. Now, central government is meant to provide some funds. Mm -hmm. And so where central government has not provided the funds mm -hmm. and the area council is unable to carry out its development mm -hmm. plans, mm -hmm. would this be something that would be flagged in the report? Um, if, if, if there's evidence that government provided funds, yes, but then I'm not, I think this, this 60% um, is just revenue generated um, by the council. It doesn't include actually government subvention. Normally, government subventions are, um, in, from what I understand, is like, you know, those are basically tailored sometimes towards a particular project that is identified by the council. Uh, but then the 60% that has been referenced here is what the council need to fund, need to spend on development projects from the g income they, they, they generate from the community because they charge all kind of levy on the community. So a percentage of that should go back and that is the 60% um, we are referencing. Okay, so let me just um, point out, I'm assuming that mm -hmm. these provisions are not, or this issue is not in the um, doc in the report because you have said that you're not aware of the provision. So Correct. I'm just going to read the provision for you. Okay. So section six of the Local Government Finance and Audit Act provides that it's the heading is grants from government. The president may, in accordance with the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia, cause to be presented to the National Assembly proposals of money to be paid out of the consolidated fund to the councils for each financial year as a, a general grant which shall not exceed 10% of the capital budget of each council and be the minimum grant paid to a council to operate decentralized services. Okay. B, a grant in aid in accordance with subsection 3. Or C, an equalization grant in accordance with subsection 4. The minister may, after consultation with the minister responsible for finance, by order published in the Gazette, amend the general grant payable to any council. A grant in aid is conditional and consists of specific monies given to the council to finance programs agreed on between the central government and the councils and be expended only for the purposes for which it is made and in accordance with the conditions agreed on. So I believe the two million subvention is a form of the conditional grant that- Probably, uh, yes. yes. And an equalization grant is made for the purposes of equalization and be based on the degree to which a local government unit is lagging behind the national average standard in the provision of social services and calculated in accordance with the first schedule. The grants made shall be remitted directly to the general fund of the beneficiary council. A formula for the distribution of grants to the council shall take into account factors including the population, the age structure of the population, the existing levels of services in the councils, their resource base, their potential for commerce and industry, and their impact on the environment. Now, so those are the grants that the government is supposed to, well, at least those are some of the grants that the government is supposed okay. to provide to the councils. And um, we had the permanent secretary and the director of governance for okay. lands um, before, and they have admitted that the government does not actually provide these grants. Government okay. gives the subvention to the councils. Right. And I believe it was about 500,000 a year before. And then the conditional grant, that was the 2 million given to all the councils. Okay, yeah. So I believe that came up later yes. in the report. Right, yes. So my, my point is that where 
central government is meant to give a grant mm -hmm. to the councils to aid in their development amongst other things mm -hmm. and to carry out projects mm -hmm. and they don't mm -hmm. and the council is unable to carry out its projects because of this okay is this something that would be flagged in the report well subsequently? Uh, if if the council has projected um you know a certain grant that is um if they expect to receive that grant from government and then had made that in their projection in terms of um you know the development plans that they have and the funds are not forthcoming from government yes then those those would be flagged but um we have I mean, our, our finding is basically based on this section of the Local Government Act, which says that um, the revenue that the council itself generates, you know, through taxes, through um, levies, um, should 60% of that should be plowed back to the community uh, by way of development project. Whether, 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 uh, whether the government provide them with, with the grant that you, um, you're talking about or not, I mean, I don't think the two are, you know, they are not necessarily linked. Um, mm -hmm. They should still be able to use 60% um, of their generated revenue um, to, to do development projects rather than spend it on recurrent expenditure. Agreed. Um, I think, well, one of the reasons why it probably wouldn't come up about in their budget, for mm -hmm. the estimated budget, because I believe the Permanent Secretary indicated that government is not, well, said the Ministry of Finance is not approving um, that line in their budget so okay. it's not realistic for the councils to budget for government grants and subventions because your ministry will not give it essentially Understood. yes so you have stated at page 22 uh -huh. that well you've brought up the issue of the submission of development projects by councillors uh -huh. can you tell us about that well, yes, yeah, so um, what, what the finding is that um, the councillors did not submit development projects because obviously um, even the projects that were submitted in 2021 could not all be um, executed, mainly because of um, lack of funding. So there wasn't any submission made by councillors in 2022 for basically what I believe would be because they they think that money would not be available to fund those projects. But obviously, um, that is still in, in contravention to, um, you know, of, of the local government acts, which requires even the small amount they are collecting, part of that money should still be um, allocated to, um, to development projects. So that, that, that hasn't happened um, in 2022. Let me just yes sure. Uh, so um, um, sorry to take you aback. Um, so is that based on what you have explained just now? Mm -hmm. Is that why you made reference to section eight, sub section seven of the local government finance and audit act? Um, we talks about the fact that um, the councils are mandated under the finance and audit act to yes. provide the the 60 percent of the collected revenue yes and plow that one back yes as development um, um the, use that 60 percent of the revenue yes. for developmental purposes yes and during the course of your audit um you are indicating that you may correct me you are indicating that um you have seen none of that happen at the base area council that's correct madam chairperson yes thank you council you may proceed Thank you. Now, uh, paragraph, I'm sorry, they, they have said that all councillors have developed their annual budget in consultation with their ward committees, have submitted it for 2023, and it's scoped in the 2023 budget. Are you aware if this is actually the case? Um, um, well, uh, because there is no um, there is no auditor's note um, contradicting that, so I would believe that that is the case. But because I where this is this is the response from management. If yeah. we disagree with their response, or if we are not presented with evidence um, to back up their response, then we 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 note it as an auditor's comment to say that 
no, we have not been presented. So where the auditor um, is silent from about the management response, then we will concur that um, that's, that's the case. I believe um, the Finance and Audit Act provides that they're supposed to have prepared their budget by the 30th of September of each year for the following year. Correct. So as at the time that you were preparing this report, if, if they had actually complied with that provision of the act, you would be able yes. to tell whether they... At that time, they have not. Yes, mm. okay. Now, paragraph 6.13 deals with medical bills. Your team has observed that the council has been paying medical bills of its staff. Yes, that, that is correct. Um, the team reviewed uh, the vouchers and saw that payments were made in respect of, to, of medical bills for staff, but there has not been any medical, um, any medical benefit policy um, adopted by the council. So um, these, these payments were ad hoc. Um, they were not based on any policy that is being developed and approved by the council. So if, if uh, medical bills were to be paid for staff, those needed, the council needed to have a medical a staff medical policy to um, to inform or to guide the the way those bills are paid and who qualifies for what. And they have said that it has been stopped with immediate effect. Yes, that's what the management said. Yes. Sorry, did they uh, present any um, um, form of um, uh, written? Um, instructions to show um, that they have put in place um, policies or guidelines no they, they, they have they, well let me they have not provided us with with any evidence to suggest that that has stopped but obviously um, once we write the report we send it to management and then we make our own findings and recommendations and um, they would then respond and have a section for management respond this this manage this responses these responses are directly from management on edited this is what they said um, so we will um, assume that they will do what exactly they said in their responses the only way we can determine that whether that is actually the case is if we do a follow-up audit or um, to, to see whether those recommendations are actually implemented. For now, we have no evidence um, to show that um, those recommendations that we made uh, are implemented. But this is an ongoing process. So we will expect some of our, our recommendations to be implemented over time. You know, so we wouldn't expect everything to happen on day one. It, it's going to be a process. And we will, um, if, whenever we make a follow-up audit, we will determine whether those recommendations are actually being implemented. Thank you, Mrs. O. Thank you. Now, at paragraph 6.14, it appears um, the council collected fees for market stalls from the market people and did not allocate stalls to them. Yes, I mean, that, that is correct. Um, the audit team noted that. Uh, when Basse finished um, constructing their market, there was, um, you know, people apply to have canteens, um, and then they were charged a $500 application fee. Um, um, the records that was reviewed by the audit team determined that hundreds, if not thousands, of people have applied um, for a number of um, canteens. We don't know the, um, how many. The audit team wasn't able to establish the number of canteens that were available for allocation. Um, and I think at some point, um, that process was stalled. And I think um, they had to start all over again um, due to some internal issues within, within the council. So what the audit team wasn't able to establish is to, um, uh, is to to say that those people who have actually applied and were not successful have been giving their money back, um, their 500. Did so you say hundreds of people applied? I'm saying if hundreds oh, okay. or maybe thousands. I mean, the, the list that we saw, it's a very long list. Out so, so, so the other thing is we, we don't know how many can, um, cantons, cantons were available, but we know for sure that um, 
the number that, that had applied was way bigger than the available, um, available um, um, cantons to be allocated. Um, they're saying that it is true that the council has collected money from vendors for the allocation of canteens at the new market and a confirmation exercise will be conducted and those vendors who paid and are not allocated will be uh, refunded and they said with immediate effect. Did they provide any evidence that this has happened? They've refunded anybody? No, they have not provided us with, um, with any evidence that um, they have refunded anyone. But like I said, um, this is their response. So we expect that they would um, implement this response over time. Um, you know, it's most of these recommendations, um, we will expect that cannot be implemented immediately, but over, over time. So with respect to the refund, I think this is something that can easily be verified. I think um, the process can really start. If, if people have, are not successful, um, they should begin the refund um, immediately. But we have no evidence that, that, that uh, that's the case. Also, do you know whether the payments were made in cash or were they made to an account? Um, I mean, the audit findings really um, seems to suggest that everything Basse does is cash. Um, I would not be surprised if these payments were all in cash. Thank you. Yes, sure. Commissioner Joyner. I just want to get some clarity on this. Is the, have you seen any evidence to the fact that um, Applicants should pay 500, and it is a non-refundable amount. Um, no, we have not seen evidence as to um, the refundability or otherwise of the application fee. Um, my, I mean that that information um, is not available to me. Um, I w I'm not sure whether the payment was based on whether if you don't get, whether you get the allocation or not, you would forfeit, you would still forfeit the 500. That, that is not, um, that information is not available to me. Um, but I think that uh, if, if Basi Area Council, for instance, have 100 stalls, I think um, it would not make a lot of sense accepting 1,000 applications for, um, and charging them 500 each you know, um, knowing full well that you don't have the capacity to provide even a fraction of that. I mean, in other words, you're just basically trying to raise money from the community. Um, I'm just looking at it, uh, if you're opening a tender. Correct. Um, you know it's one project or one plot, mm -hmm. but you have six or seven people applying for that lot. Correct. And uh, not all of them will, will, will win. Only one person will win. Understood. So the other six will are sure to lose. Understood. And uh, in that instance, mm -hmm. they they are not refunded. Understood. They are, they are, I was just thinking in that line I, that maybe that's yeah, the yeah, case. Yeah. That that is that is logical. I I think what you said is is um, Commissioner Joyner is 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 true. Um, I'm not sure whether in this case it should be applicable here. This is. Um, you know, people, the council is supposed to serve the local people. Um, I think that um, even if, the ca if, if, for instance, the application fee was non-refundable, they could even charge a very low amount for that, knowing that, um, you know, these are people that you're working for, and it's not meant to be, um, on the part of the council, a business venture to make more money. Um, from from the community, so that's that's, but that's um, entirely up to the council to decide. Um, a further question to that: Were you able to see the application form to verify the the conditions of them applying? Maybe that's a, a stated uh, condition that even though you 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 paid your money and you did not have uh, a stall, you will lose out on your application fee. Um, do we have the application fee? You, have, you saw the application fee. Was it non-refundable? 
Mr. So, you can ask the guy to come to your table and you can consult. Yes, he comes to me. So um, the, the lead auditor just confirmed that um, they saw the applications and they were um, non-refundable. That's what the application um, said. But I think he said that um, once the allocation was done, or at least, you know, there was, the process had some issues and I think, you know, it had stalled at some point. So there was a protest by the people who applied and they went to the council and the CEO had promised that whoever was in allocated a canteen was going to be refunded um, their $500 C. So I think um, the refund um, was based on the understanding that the, the, what, what the CEO actually promised, that whoever was in allocated, because everyone went there to protest, they would be giving um, their, their, their $500. Um, I think that is what informed the audit finding about the refund of 500 was um, was there any record? Was there any um, evidence to the effect that the CEO had said they will be refunded? Because bearing in mind that when these applicants were applying uh -huh. for these stalls, uh -huh. they were told that you will have to purchase the form uh -huh. for 500 and it's right. non-refundable, uh -huh. even whereas you are not allocated. Right. So was there any written documentation to that effect or was it only verbal? I guess, um, Madam Chair, it was only verbal. Chair, can I just also point out that in the management respect response, though they have stated that they will refund the yes. monies. Okay. So the vendors who paid and are not allocated will be refunded. Yes, I think the, the, the finding was basically, the reason why it, it became a finding was that um, management had actually come forward to say they will refund anyone that was in allocated a canteen because there was a, a protest over the allocation. Um, and like I said, a lot of people paid and were not allocated. Thank you. Thank you. Chairperson, it's 12 o'clock. I don't know whether this is a convenient point to break or should we go further? Yes, I, I believe that um, um, it's a convenient point to stop for um, for tea break to allow the evidence not to be too long for the transcribers. And we will come back after 30 minutes and continue on the evidence. Thank you, we may rise.